Hey everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger, and we've got a little bit of a storm system that is over the Caribbean right now, and it's going to be making its way into the Gulf, and we're going to be talking about all these different things that, you know, it's a little bit unknown of what exactly this storm is going to do, but we're starting to get that picture formed, so let's talk about that right now. All right, here is our area of interest, and as you can see, it's going to be kind of pushing off to the east, and man, look at this little cone of uncertainty. As you can see, there's a lot of different scenarios of what this storm can still presently do uh, over the next seven days this thing has a chance a 60 percent chance of forming over the next two days not so much it's going to be going over the mountains but we're going to be talking about which way this thing could go and just how strong it could be so stay tuned here we go first off this is where the storm is right now the center of pressure is located over in this region you can see that we got puerto rico right back here we got cuba going up there so this thing is going to be continuing to trek on the southerly track at least according to what we were talking about a little while ago about what this thing could do and it's kind of moving south of the bahamas so this thing has a pretty good chance of making it into the gulf and in fact a lot of models are starting to say but what it does once it gets there that's what we're going to be trying to decipher all right now we're going to be looking at the potential direction you know that's important for folks that are going to be kind of out in the, some of these regions here where you know landfall is going to be possible so you know we're going to be looking at kind of the different scenarios and trying to get an average for you guys just to tell you where i think this thing might go in the future again it's still hard to tell we are only a couple of days out from this thing actually coming close to the coast but uh you know we're gonna try to do our best here we go we're gonna start uh, to push this forward here and this is a gefs model here and you can see that we do have a little area of a center of pressure there coming off of what would be cuba that's gonna push up to the north and you can see the gfs has this coming very close to florida and then it goes up into kind of, um, you know, just to the north of Tampa Bay, kind of in the Cedar Key area, and just scoots off to the east really quickly, comes back out over the Atlantic Ocean, kind of strengthens out there, maybe bringing some storm surge to the South Carolina, to North Carolinas, and then, you know, that's the kind of end of this run. But the Euro model, on the other hand, kind of pushes this thing kind of up in the same region, and then, you know, we're not really seeing much happen with this at all until uh, really far out into the future here it just kind of you know you can see it's right in this area uh and it just kind of stalls it doesn't really form into much of a storm at all and then starts to drop a bunch of rain i mean it's not really too much happening and no real major you know centers of pressure look at this and then eventually after it's done stalling it goes back out into the gulf of mexico <laughs> wow yeah what a weird run from the euro not sure how accurate that's gonna be but uh you know there is something to talk about here at least in terms of the steering mechanisms that's gonna be happening with this storm so let's gonna talk about why there's we're seeing some weird stuff happen here all right so out there right now across the country we do have some you know anomalously low pressures and then you know we're gonna have this high pressure build in we're gonna have this high pressure over here in the Gulf of Mexico or not the Gulf of Mexico the Atlantic and then we're gonna see this little low pressure system make it off of Cuba and as that moves up to the north you can see we got a little bit of a frontal boundary that's gonna be coming down to the south and you know with most models that grabs the storm system and kind of slings it uh, off up here because you know the winds are gonna be going this way on this side and then back over here the winds are going to be going like that and so you know that's why most of the models are calling for a recurve of this storm but if that frontal boundary kind of just falls apart as the system approaches the florida region um the storm's just going to kind of stall out and not really do much at all and you can see that ridge starts to build back in and then you know so essentially when you don't really have many of these boundaries you don't really have a high pressure system or a low pressure system really controlling a storm it just kind of dances out there starts doing a little tap dance there's a little loop de loop so we're going to be looking at two averages here the first one is going to be the eps uh average here the means and so we're going to see a lot of little dots kind of pop up on this map and this is going to kind of give us an understanding of what different scenarios could play out in an average here and as you can see uh, most of the members of this model bring this thing right next to florida and then pushing this even further uh, we can see that this is starting to push up to the north uh, we got a couple members out there towards like eastern florida but that's not really a uh, high chance scenario it seems like the averages here for the eps at least uh, bring this in with a couple stalling out there near 
near the west coast of Florida uh, as that kind of frontal boundary leaves this storm behind. So, you know, most of the scenarios kind of bring this either up into Florida, then inland a little bit, then recurves off to the east, um, or, you know, it just treks right into like the Cedar Key area, pushes over southern Georgia, and then re-enters out in the Atlantic. The GEFS ensembles here are also kind of doing the same thing. Look at this. We actually have a little bit of agreement here. I just wanted to point this out really quick. You can see there's the models. There's our little, um, you know, potential uh, scenarios, and they're all kind of clustered in this region here. Another way to look at the potential track of this storm is to look at spaghetti models. No, you can't eat these, although I bet you if you could, it'd be delicious if you threw some marinara sauce on it. But then we got another model run here with a lot more members, and as you can see, you know, it, we've got a spread. We've got a spread still with this storm. Now, you know, in terms of direct landfall, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, it kind of sucks to say, but we are still looking uh, anywhere from the toes of Louisiana uh, all the way up into North Carolina. Now, it's a little bit of a different scenario. A lot of the scenarios going up here um, are actually because of that recurve. So that would be technically a second landfall. But uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of different scenarios that we got to watch out for still, which is crazy because, I mean, that's 24 hours. That's 48 hours. That's 72 hours. So we're talking one, two, three, four days until potential landfall, maybe five, six days if it goes a little bit further to the west. But I mean, yeah, uh, it's still a little bit uncertain. So don't be packing your bags or canceling your vacations just yet. But unfortunately, once we start to figure out what this thing will probably end up doing, uh, we're only going to have a couple of days until landfall. So to keep that in mind, just be ready to act fast. All right, now we're going to be start to talk about the intensity of this storm. And as you can see, these are kind of some of our first runs here. So just take this with the grain of salt. But the first kind of projection for this storm is calling it uh, to be a category two hurricane. But keep look at this. Here's a uh, here's a good thing to note here. Um, so you, this is at 108, 120, 132, 144, 156. And then it finally starts to lose intensity um, by 168 hours hours. That is something to really pay attention to there because um, that means that this thing's going to curve off into the Gulf of Mexico, which that's what these models are saying. Again, that's not the most likely scenario. So I think we have to pause, uh, kind of pause on this uh, storm uh, intensity, looking at at least this guidance for now. All right, now we're going to start to talk about the strength of this storm and pushing this forward. Uh, we're looking at the pressures here and the max winds are not the max wind speeds, but the projected wind speeds uh, for this storm. And you can see uh, coming into Sunday kind of evening here, you know, we're already starting to see 30 uh, to 40 mile per hour winds kind of in this area, 20 to 30 starting to reach up onto the coast, maybe a little bit of storm surge there uh, for the Keys. Uh, and that seems like a pretty likely scenario as most models are bringing this thing at least into this area. And then pushing this forward a little bit more, you can see that the GFS kind of forms this into a, you know, almost a tropical depression or maybe even getting close to a tropical storm at this point, bringing some stronger waves into western Florida, kind of the Tampa Bay region. Then it starts to strengthen uh, right off the coast of Tampa there. And then the GFS kind of brings this kind of scraping, scraping up the coast. And you can see we're going to kind of have a potentially uh, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds there. And then it's going to push off to the north, make landfall, kind of, you know, still maybe a tropical depression, tropical storm over land. And then it re-exits out into the Atlantic over there with, you know, decent amount of winds uh, starting to pick back up 30 uh, to 40 miles per hour. So that'd be around a tropical depression or tropical storm and then it kind of makes its way off to the north and then re-strengthens look at that at the very end of the model run here we have about 50 to 60 mile per hour winds off of the coast there of South Carolina. All right, then this is the Euro model run. And as you can see, you know, it kind of forms a little center of pressure, but it's really elongated and not super organized. And you can see that it does start to bring some winds in the area, but not super strong. I mean, here we are on Monday where the GEFS says we're going to be making landfall. And this thing is stalled, kind of just bringing some rain showers uh, into the panhandle of Florida. And then eventually it tries to organize the pressure. You can see that there's 
little lines are trying to get closed up there. Um, and then eventually, as we go into Wednesday, the Euro forms this thing uh, kind of back down uh, in like the central kind of eastern Gulf of Mexico. And this thing just kind of hangs out out there and doesn't really move into land uh, for really that long. This would be a kind of a, a big rainmaker scenario, but not necessarily a big wind damage scenario. But again, you know, that's just kind of a, a couple different scenarios of what the strength of this could be. And it's looking like it could be anything from a tropical storm to a hurricane at this point, making landfall uh, most likely somewhere in the Gulf, at least according to what the models are saying right now. Obviously, the trends could change over time, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. But yeah, that's what we're talking about there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully, this was a little bit helpful, and I will see you guys on the next forecast.